Well, as you'll be aware, every year we take one particular day when we reach out to every person who's attached to Kingfisher family to come together in prayer. Now, in many ways, Kingfisher family is very diverse and is located in many different cultures and surrounded by different challenges. But we all believe in, love and serve the same Lord Jesus Christ. We all turn to him and cry out to him, beseeching him for his kingdom to come and that his will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. This has always been the response of the church, no matter how big the challenges are in front of us, how daunting the times that we live in are. For example, in Acts chapter 4, when Peter and John were arrested for preaching about Jesus, and the next day they were brought before the council and told not to teach about Jesus anymore. They, of course, refused to go along with that and were threatened further and then released. What we read is that as soon as they were freed, Peter and John found the other believers and told them what the, uh, the leading priests and elders had said. Then all the believers were united as they lifted their voices in prayer. And we read after this prayer, the building where they were meeting shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they preached God's message with boldness. So the response in Acts chapter 4 and in various other places to difficult and daunting situations is to meet together for prayer. So in Acts 12, when Peter was once again in prison, verse 5 says, But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. Serious times call for serious prayer. And around the world, many churches, specifically churches within the Kingfisher family, are committed to serious prayer. Your prayer warriors already. But maybe others of us are, are not. Maybe you wonder about how to pray particularly on this day of prayer, where the three topics that we're looking at and praying into the global pandemic, the war in Ukraine, and the global persecution of Christians, is just too big to bring to God in prayer. We find we don't know how to pray, or how our prayers can possibly impact those things. So just before we really get into some serious prayer on this international day of prayer, I want to highlight five key things to remember for powerful, effective prayer to be a reality in our lives. Here's number one. Focus on the character of God, not the size of the problem. Now, I've said it before, we often make a fundamental error when faced by an impossible situation. We assume that God thinks it's impossible as well. We think that just because we see it as just too big and too impossible, a global situation and what can we do, that God must look at it the same way. What can I do either? So in the Bible, we're taught to make a, a decision to focus on the character of God in order to, to, to take our focus off the size of the problems that are, fo that are facing us. God who is enthroned forever, says King David as he prays. God who is enthroned forever. He's reminding himself that God is all-powerful, almighty. He's the king of kings. He's enthroned, not just for a while until someone stronger comes along, uh, like this problem that we're facing, but forever. He's enthroned forever. And this is the first key to to praying effectively. Don't let the size of the problem that is facing you undermine your confidence in Almighty God. You may be daunted by the size of these three things we're praying for on this day of prayer, but God isn't. 
You know, there was a, an occasion in the Old Testament that uh, we've looked at from time to time in, uh, in the past where the people of Israel were faced with seemingly insurmountable odds. They had not just one army opposing them, but three. They were about to be wiped off the face of the earth. <clears throat> and 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6, records uh, where they chose to place their focus. O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. They're not just trying to whip up some courage here. They were deliberately choosing to focus on the character of God, not on the enormity of the problem facing them. They deliberately chose to spend time at the place of encouragement rather than at the place of discouragement. And you and I will never find the resources we need through staring at the problem. We often don't see miracles happening because we are so transfixed with the problem that we, that we don't focus on the solution. The right focus when confronted by an impossible situation is to say to God, God, you've got a problem. <laughs> focus on the character of God. He's almighty. Power and might are in his hands. He rules over the kingdoms of the nations. And if he can do that, then he can rule over the problems facing you and me. No one can withstand him, certainly not what I'm facing right now. So focus on the character of God. That's the first key. Well, the second key is this. Focus on the promises of God, not on your ability to see a solution. We have such a strong desire to be in control that a lot of our prayers are really about letting God know what the solutions are, or at the very least, what the possible options are. But listen, if you're praying for a miracle, you've got to let go of the limiting factor of your desire for control. You have to admit to God that it's beyond your control. As Psalm uh, 55 verse 22 says, cast all your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. God's promise is not to put into action our solution. God's promise is to be God. He keeps his promises. And as the song says, he can make a way when there seems to be no way. That's his speciality. David wrote Psalm 55, uh, and years later, his son Solomon wrote this. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it, as it is today. As God acted with David, so Solomon knew he would act with, with him. And so will he act with us. He hasn't changed. He's still the God who promises with his mouth and fulfills with his hand. And you know, there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. And when we need a, a, a miracle, as we're looking to on, on this International Day of Prayer, we can either use the time and the energy on trying to figure out a solution that God probably won't use anyway, or we can focus on any one of the thousands of promises that God makes in his word. On this day of prayer, we are praying about situations that are out of our control, but it's not out of God's control. He can make a way where there isn't a way or there seems to be no way. Focus on the character of God, not on the size of the problem. Focus on the promises of God, not on our ability to see a solution. Then thirdly, focus on the presence of God rather than the presence of the problem. You know, miracles don't tend to take place until we admit that it's impossible without God's help. Maybe you can relate to this poem. The world had such a hopeful beginning, but man spoiled it all by sinning. We trust that the story will end to God's glory, but right now the other side's winning. That was written by the US Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes 
who um, lived from 1841 to 1935. If you focus on the presence of the problem, you will be defeated, guaranteed. What did uh, King David do um, when he was faced with this kind of situation? Well, look at Psalm 55, which I mentioned earlier in verse 16. But I call to God and he saves me. See, focusing on the problem brings defeat, but focusing on God brings encouragement and eventual victory. If you're feeling defeated right now, listen to what God is right now saying to you in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. I will make you strong and help you. I will protect you and save you. You know, on this day of prayer, we're praying for miracles to happen around the world. And if you want a miracle to happen, focus on where the miracle is going to come from. Focus on God. When we assume the attitude, we can't do it, but we know someone who can, God always responds. When we focus on the presence of the problem, we are taking on God's role in the situation. Don't try to fight God's battles. It'll only wear us out and we'll only be defeated. Focus on God's ability, not our inability. God is with us. Who can stand against us? Well, the fourth shift in focus that we need to make when we come to God in prayer is, is, is to shift focus onto God's track record and away from our feelings of fear or inadequacy. We're praying about global issues in this day of prayer. How inadequate does that make us feel? But that's irrelevant. Just thinking back to Psalm 55, in the very midst of the situation that, that David found himself in, where someone very close to him had betrayed him and now he was in danger of being overthrown as a king, he makes this amazing statement in verse 23. But as for me, I trust in you. David became a great leader, but he was always aware of his inadequacy and inability to cope. And you know, if he and I have anything in common, it's probably that, that realisation of that inability. So how did he accomplish so much, become such a great leader? How did he see miracle after miracle happening in his life and ministry? Well, the next verse in Psalm 55 reveals the secret. But when I am afraid, I will put my confidence in you. Yes, I will trust in the promises of God. And since I'm trusting him, what can mere man do to me? See, that's the secret. You trust in God's track record. God has never lost a battle. He's almighty, he's all powerful, and he's on your side. His track record is formidable, which means that the outcome of the situation that we're currently facing and praying into is not dependent upon our level of fear and inadequacy, but on the sufficiency of God. And furthermore, our level of fear and inadequacy subside as we realise the impressive track record of that all-powerful God. So, focus on the track record of God, not on our feelings of fear and inadequacy. If you need a miracle, as we're praying for this evening, or in this day of prayer, remind yourself that God deals in miracles. He's done it in the past, and he can do it again. And then there's a fifth change of focus that needs to occur if we're to pray effectively. And it's the choice to focus on God's victory, not the expectation of our defeat. God's victory may not be apparent right now, but it is a sure hope for the future. And it's something that we're called to focus on. If your back is to the wall, you can either focus on your impending doom 
or God's impending intervention. Now David in Psalm 55 chose to focus on the latter. God who is enthroned on high will hear them and afflict them. In other words, God is going to sort out this situation. Now, how did David know this for sure, when everything around him seemed to indicate that it was all going to end in disaster? Because he was able to call to mind the track record of God, the way in which God had dealt with him in the past, and the knowledge of God's love and care for him. And that enabled him to focus on the hope of God's victory rather than, than the expectation of his defeat. Faith is thanking God in advance. Praise is verbalized faith. When we focus on God's victory, we are far more in a position to receive a miracle from God. That's the lesson that David had learned as a boy when he went out alone to face Goliath. He made a faith statement that day that proved to be a defining moment in his life. And it'll prove to be a defining moment in, in our lives if we make this our faith statement as well. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. That's it. The battle is the Lord's. So let's pray. We're praying for three things specifically on this International Day of Prayer. For victory over the pandemic. For an end to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And for the one in seven Christians on earth who are facing persecution for their beliefs. Don't forget, nearly one billion people uh, in the world still have not had access to even one vaccine shot. The atrocities in Ukraine are continuing as Russia bombs civilian, civilian targets indiscriminately. Just recently, uh, a, a shopping center with more than a thousand people inside. Don't forget, around the world, one in seven Christian believers face persecution for their faith three global giants. So let's pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now I'm going to invite you right now to not just switch off now you've uh, heard this talk and go about doing whatever you're going to do, but I want to invite you now to spend some time in committed, passionate prayer for those three global giants really call upon God to rend the heavens and come down and bring about his kingdom will in this situation, these situations. I'm going to start us off right now with a prayer, and then I'm going to invite you to continue in prayer. Lord God, where does our help come from? It comes from you, O Lord. We put our trust in you. We focus on you your promises, your track record, and not on the size of the global giants facing us. You are the God who saves. You are the God who rescues. You are the God who is almighty. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. At your name, every, every, every knee must bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we pray, Lord, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. May it be done here on earth in the face of these three global giants that we're praying for in, on this International Day of Prayer. May your kingdom come and may your will be done with regards to the pandemic, with regards to the war in Ukraine, with regards to the persecution of your people, Lord. We pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for breakthrough. We pray that you would bring victory. And as we face these giants, we do so in the knowledge 
that it's not our problem to solve. It's yours. It's not our kingdom that we're seeking to bring to bear. It's your kingdom come. So Lord, we want to pray passionately now for these three global giants in the knowledge that you are the God who, whose name is above every name. You are the God who never breaks a promise. All your promises are backed by all the honour of your name. We thank you that we can approach this boldly, confidently, humbly, and with the sureness, the surety, that you, Lord Jesus Christ, will act in the light of these prayers. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just invite you now to spend some time just praying about those three global giants, the pandemic, the war in Ukraine, persecution of God's people around the world. Let's pray into those, your kingdom come. Lord, would you rend the heavens and come down and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for participating on this International Day of Prayer. We look forward to seeing the changes that are wrought by these prayers. God bless you.